You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. This is the No Doubt About It podcast. No doubt about it. And now your hosts, Christy and Mark Runcetti. I was checking to make sure we weren't too yellow. Yeah, we are. This shot is fairly yellow. Yeah, it's really yellow. Um, but I think we're fine. Ava, are we fine from what you see? Okay. Okay. So we just won't forget on the monitor. If you can see there, our monitors were like uh, bright yellow. We have some very different. <laughs> yeah, this is very different. Each camera looks like it doesn't know the other camera. It's like, I, who are you? I do think lighting changes throughout the day. And it so does. We, when we record at different times, sometimes we look a little different. Well, but... true. And we do have a big window open behind us yeah, so maybe, as we do this. Maybe which... if we're, if if we look yellow, we don't have jaundice. Not yeah. Well, we just go ahead and tell people that today. Yeah. yeah. We're perfectly healthy. It's just we have a, a window open. Maybe yeah. that's it. So we'll anyway, a, a lot of crazy things. Oh my uh, gosh. You know, national things, local things. Trump may be coming to New Mexico. Yeah. It's I a mean, it's a possibility. There are those out there who say it not only could he be coming, he is, and it's oh, happening. Like, I, I I don't I don't know that I still buy that yet, but we'll see. It, it's a, it's a real possibility. We'll go through that. We'll, we'll go through how the rhetoric in this race is spinning out of control in the past twenty four hours, and now you can just tell from now until the election day, this is going to be the most vicious I think exchange back and forth that we've seen in a long time. And I think this tells you something about where the race is. And we'll lay out where everything is right now. We'll lay out where everything is here in New Mexico in just a second. And then we'll go through some of the challenges I think one of the candidates is facing. And Harris is clearly struggling more than Trump is, but it doesn't mean she can't win. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to readjust right now. And we'll tell you what that's going to mean and, and what it could mean for the race. So we'll go through all that stuff. Plus, at the end of the show. The two most haunted hotels in New Mexico have been revealed. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. We need, like, scary music. And it's not the St. James, any. by the way, because they shut down. I know. They did shut down. I'm sad that the St. James yeah. closed down in Cimarron. It was a f – like, you and I went on a date there years and years and years oh, ago. Oh, I remember. <laughs> well, I remember that – I remember the – I remember you us sitting remember in the bar. You remember it very differently well, than I do because <laughs> I just remember we went to the bar. Right. And, and there were – yes, and there were uh, bullet holes in the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, there was bullet holes, and they yeah. were talking about the gunfight. So I yeah. just think it's kind of a cool piece of history. It is. Billy the Kid was there, things like that. Anyway, I'm kind of bummed that that's gone because yeah. – or closed down. Maybe somebody will buy it. I, yeah, I don't think it's gone forever. I don't think it's going to – I think it will be back, but, I, but for now. But for now, we'll down. tell you about two other hotels that are um, haunted. We have been to both. We have. And one has a special tie to us. Yes, one so, does. Anyway, we'll one tell you about indeed. that at the end. Let's get into some of this uh, polling again, yeah. more localized. People are wondering where, where our local races are headed. Yeah, let's start local, and then we'll hit the Trump coming to New Mexico stuff, and yeah. then we'll go from there. Uh, Journal has been unleashing all their numbers here, latest numbers. Uh, these are not a surprise. Um, CD1 and CD3, meaning CD1 being Albuquerque, Congressional District 1, and that is Stansberry versus Steve Jones is a blowout. There's no doubt. Stansberry at 53% in their poll, 36% for Steve Jones. Steve Jones got the nomination. And when he did, I think everybody said, who is Steve Jones? Mm -hmm. And has not raised significant amounts of money. Melanie Stansberry has not had to run a real race, which is a shame because I think she really, if there's one person in our congressional delegation that is least responsive to the people of her district, I think it's her. Mm -hmm. but she's just not getting a challenge. Unfortunately, Steve Jones is, is not up to that. And then, of course, up in the northern portion of the state, and actually some of this stretches down toward Lee County because they gerrymandered all of this so much that they, they feel like they never have a chance to lose because of the way they drew these congressional districts. What we have there, and we'll take a look at those numbers, that's Teresa Ledger-Fernandez at 52%, uh, Sharon Chostachilich at 35%. So that's a big 17-point gap. Mm -hmm. That's that's not coming down either, unfortunately. Sharon is a very nice person yeah. who who we really like as as a human being. I've never met uh, Teresa, but uh, Sharon is a really nice person, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, just not able to compete with some of what's happening there. Now, the Heinrich and Nella Domenici race that's not particularly close either in the journal polling. It's fifty one forty right now, still nine undecided. So, I do think this number could come down a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. Um, if especially if Nelly gets some of those, you know, more of those undecideds break for the challenger, and that usually happens down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you're going to support Heinrich, usually that that kind of happens. Already, yeah, you already have voted yeah, for him. Yeah, right. So that this this bums me out. Well, how how accurate compared to past journal polls are? Do you think this is like compared to like say where they placed your races right. at? Like they usually underran our numbers by about three or four points. Okay. So the journal would come out with numbers like we were down eight and, and they, they, they underrun us. So, but you know, the journal polling is, is fairly good. Mm-hmm. So within you know, a margin of error. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Three, okay. four points. I think it's fair. So it could be a bit closer than what they're saying. And then down the stretch, you don't know. And there are a lot of Senate races that, that could well flip hands here. Republicans have a real chance to do that. And so could the numbers be better for Domenici down the stretch? It's possible. But as you look at the individual breakdown of the numbers, uh, the discouraging part, if you're Nella Domenici, is the fact that you're, you're not even winning men. You're right. losing men, 49 to 43. You're losing women in a huge way. Obviously, you'll lose Democrats. She's winning Republicans, independents. Heinrich's winning independence as well. That's shocking. Yeah, me, actually. But. Well, you know, but that's when you got an 11 point lead, that kind of is what happens. And regions of the states, Albuquerque is not close. It's a 23 point gap. The Northwest, you have a gap there for, for Nello, which is Farmington, which is a very conservative part of the state. North central areas are a blowout. The Southwest, Las Cruces, a bit for Heinrich by about seven points. And Eastern New Mexico is a blowout for Nella. There's just not enough population out there right. to make that huge difference. The college educated stuff is 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 tough because it just doesn't matter. High school diploma, Heinrich actually wins. Some college Heinrich wins. College Heinrich wins and and graduate Heinrich wins. So these are not great numbers mm-hmm. right now. Now you don't know. Things could could tighten up a bit, but I think we all wanted to see. I think it's good for a state to have competitive single digit races where you're going down to the wire and both sides are fighting it out. I just think that's good for your state. Right. I also think it's good if you have representatives from both parties representing your state. I think so too. And I, I, just I do think, too. I agree. Sadly, we just don't see that balance whatsoever in New Mexico. And I think that just kind of shifts us to a weird place where it's it's odd because then during off elections or maybe like leading up to an election, you hear a lot of, well, there's a, there's a, you know, we can flip the state red and, and we have a lot of conservative people out here. We absolutely have a lot of conservatives and a lot of conservative Democrats. Um, it's just going to be a question of like who shows up to vote yeah. and who, who gets, who, you know, who can make well, it happen. And that's one thing about polling. And, and you make a really good point, which is every time you take a poll and you want it to be accurate, you have to try to model who's accurate actually going to vote. Mm-hmm. And so there are times when polls are way off because they not necessarily that they're trying to be biased, but that they end up filling their surveys with people who are not representative of who ends up voting. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. If you're part of the Dominici campaign, that's what you're pushing and hoping for at that point is that, is that the journal has the wrong mix of who's going to vote, wrong mix of Republicans, wrong mix of independents and Democrats, and see what happens. Well, I've so. heard that the um, the the polling locations are very busy yeah. lately for this early voting. I've heard um, like lines. I mean, I've never waited in line to vote here. Not one well, time have I waited, and I voted in every election since we moved here. I have never waited in a line to vote. So it's yeah. kind of. A little shocking to hear that people are waiting in lines. Well, and that's good, right? right. I mean, that's that's the kind right. of turnout you want. And by the way, nationwide, you're seeing more of an even distribution of Republicans and Democrats voting early. Mm-hmm. So Republicans have finally gotten on yeah. the train they, of stop just, waiting. just go vote. Yeah, Stop honestly. waiting until Election Day. Stop it. We, and we've said that a million times. Too. Right. Like, you have right. no idea what position you'll be in on Election right. Day. Something could happen. Don't. It's like waiting to do your homework the night before. Yeah. Don't do it. Go vote. I know people are worried about them twisting your vote or taking your vote or somehow manipulating your vote if you vote too early. Just go. Get your vote in because life gets hectic and busy and sometimes things get in your way yeah. and, you, and you can't end up voting on election day. Yeah. So. And the one thing, other thing is for people to think about when you're in a campaign and you vote, the candidate and the candidate's team knows the minute you voted. So when that happens, what that allows the campaign to do is to say, we've got this many resources to chase votes. We're no longer chasing your vote. We don't need to chase your vote anymore. Take your vote off the table, whoever you're voting for. I'm not telling you how to vote, but whoever you're voting for, take that vote off the table so that then the candidates can go and concentrate on people that are still persuadable, that are still sitting there going, I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't voted yet because I don't know who I'm going to vote for. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing this and you're thinking, hey, I love my candidate. I'm going to vote for him. You know, I want to run and make, you know, make this vote happen. 
and say you're you're voting you're in our district and you're voting for Nicole Chavez. You're like I I got to get my vote in for mm-hmm. Nicole. Well, good. Then Nicole though then then goes and focuses on other people that haven't voted yet. Yes. Yeah. So don't think that it doesn't matter when you vote. It actually it actually is helpful when you vote early because then you take the candidate's money. And you allow them to focus that money onto the people who may still be persuadable. So it actually does benefit you to vote earlier, especially if you've got a candidate that you really care about and you really want to help. Right. And a lot of these smaller races, the candidates, they're running low on money at this point. And it's yeah. hard to fundraise at the last couple of weeks. So it's vitally important to try to just get out there and show your support. Yeah. Um, especially if you already know who you're going to vote for. Like, yep. just go make it happen if you can. So, okay. and also, as we talked about in the last episode, if you've missed it, go back and listen to it. But a young voter for the first time showed up to vote, found out that her voting registration was actually a kind of a, uh, it was pretty messed up. They had thought that she'd already had requested an online absentee vote in a different county. So go back and listen to that story because she really pushes the fact that, hey, don't wait to the last minute in case there is a glitch in the system. Yeah. You need to get that figured out before um, election day. Yeah, so. very true. Okay. So a lot of rumors jumping out right there. I heard this rumor. My friends are asking me, Mark. They're yeah. like, hey, okay, what does Mark think? Does he Is Trump coming? Is he not coming? Is Trump yeah. coming? Is well, he not coming? I think if Trump comes, it will be a airport-ish stop. Where he'll come into a hangar. Like a flyby where he no, just waves. The, the Trump Force One just slides in and goes out. No, I think it will be a, a – I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know this part for sure. But I, I would not be surprised if it's right at the airport. You do a hangar. You set it up and you have you know 5,000 people there. And he gives mm-hmm. a quick half an hour speech and then he's out and on to Arizona or somewhere else. But there's more and more information that this is, is going to be a possibility because of some of the polling that's come out. We've seen a poll has Trump down by three. We've seen two other polls that have Trump down by four. And then the journal poll has him down by nine. So we don't don't know where all this in, goes. In New Mexico. In New Mexico. Yes, yes, yes. In New Mexico. So now we'll just tell you in the in the spirit of being honest here, I don't think Trump has a chance to win New Mexico. I'm not telling you he does. So And you're so, not being a Debbie Downer like no, a no, woman no. called me on Twitter when I said that. Because at the end of the day, he also doesn't need to win New uh, Mexico. Gosh, no. If Trump wins New win. Mexico, let me tell you something. This is going to be an electoral college landslide mm-hmm. that you haven't seen since Reagan. So right. let me just tell you that. So so that th- that part doesn't matter. But I, I will say, you know, a little closer. Trump's always had an affinity, I think, for New Mexico and, and comes here when he can. So I want to take you to a quick soundbite from Mark Halperin. And we like Mark Halperin because he's pretty dialed in to kind of the conventional wisdom in both campaigns. And so he gets some good information. Here's what he says about a Trump trip to Albuquerque. Poll out today on Twitter from the Trump folks about New Mexico, showing it within the margin of error. You may think that's silly, and it's certainly silly to think about New Mexico in the sense that if Trump wins New Mexico, he's going to win in a landslide. And so knowing the status of New Mexico is not important. Here's what I'll say. Put a pin in this. Donald Trump will do a rally in Albuquerque before Election Day. That's my prediction. Okay. And so, how, that's pretty how de- I asked you this when we heard this, how legit are his predictions? Like, how close are his predictions? Who's predictions mark halpern when he oh says, how good is he at those sorts yeah, of things he says put a pin in it yeah uh, I, I think he's usually pretty good okay so here's what i think he's tapping into i think he's tapping into and talking to kellyanne conway and people like that mm-hmm. um who are saying yeah he should go you know and especially because if trump is going from wherever georgia to arizona stop in new mexico it'll yeah. be and that's why i'm saying you're not going to see him go to the santa, santa Ana star center you're not going to see him get out of the car take two hours to get there mm-hmm. take two two hours to get back none of that i think what you'll see is a very close proximity stop where he can knock it out in a couple of hours and be gone gotcha and so that that's a real possibility well then halperin continued on his show and at asked Alex Castellanos, who's a kind of longtime political expert, says, does it make any sense for him to go to New Mexico? Donald Trump goes to Albuquerque. It's a day away from a real battleground state. Raise your hand if you think that's a good idea to go to Albuquerque. Anybody? Alex, why? Because momentum, because he's playing across the 50-yard line. These campaigns don't happen on in states anymore. They happen on our screens. And if you have a successful event across the 50-yard line, that happens in all the battlegrounds. So, of course, it's a good thing. Yeah, I, I did agree. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, there we go. So, interesting. I think it's an interesting point. That guy point. sounds like Sam Elliott, by the way. The guy oh, yeah. Castellanos? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he like, does, well, a little, a little bit of that's the recording. When you actually listen to him, he's not quite like Sam Elliott. I mean, yeah. you sound, are you trying to do Sam Elliott right now? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Come on I didn't now. even try do, that. Do, yeah, I did not did, even try that. You just lowered your voice for me, though. Does he, do, does he do the Sandia ads or not? Oh, I know. We need to find that out. 
Does anybody know out there? It drives me and Mark crazy. We see the Sandia Casino ad all the time, and it sounds like the real Sam Elliott. I think it could just be somebody who sounds like see, Sam See, I could Elliott. see Sandia having the cash to be like, yeah. We want Sam Elliott. We want Sam Elliott. Well, and then the question is, is how much is Sam Elliott's now as a talent, right? Because, I mean, he's what's he been in lately? Well, no, but as a voiceover guy, oh, Sam Elliott know. does not do the voiceovers. He doesn't. For Casino. Did you just Google that? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh, do we know we who it is? Yes. Who is it? It actually, they put out a, uh, they put out a presser on it, an ad for a Sam Elliott sound alike. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Okay. That's what I it's, said. It's but, a man named uh, Chris Chavez. Okay. Oh, Chris Chavez. Okay. Is he through, from- um, is he from here? Applause talent agency. Okay. Yeah, he lives in Albuquerque. Oh, okay. Go good for Chris, him, man. Go Chris Chavez, you. So that's you the thing, fooled though. Mark. You didn't fool me. Hold on. This I is knew the that thing. you weren't Chris, Sam Elliott, but you sound very similar. With more ways to win, whatever game you play, Sandia Resort Casino. Now more than ever, close to home, far from ordinary. Here's the thing: if you're Sam Elliott, are you not like? What, do I get a cut of this? Because if you're, I, I mean, you know, he can't like trademark his own. Well, I guess he can trademark his own voice. He just can't trademark someone else doing his voice. Well, yeah, probably not. I mean, think about yeah. that. Think about the greatest voiceovers. I mean, I'm trying to think of, uh, oh my gosh, Shawshank Redemption guy. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. A- absolutely. Oh, uh, Morgan so Freeman. Morgan Freeman. I ended do frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, he's got a great o- a voiceover. Oh. He's... And then also, I mean, Darth Vader. Um, oh, oh yes. Well, why are you going back in the Wayback Machine? I'm sorry, here? he I'm, just died. I know. What's his name? The voice for CNN. This is CNN. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, yep. uh, no, uh, I can't remember anything gosh, anymore. Yeah, this is my life. Oh my gosh! This is the game that we See, play don't, at our yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Now I'm. Now I, I can't believe I don't. Uh, Ava, who played Darth Vader? You don't know who played Darth Vader? I I don't know his name off the top of my head. I don't know either. Actually. Oh, it's, oh, it's uh, oh, uh, people at home are screaming it, it. Oh, this says Anakin Skywalker, which is no, not what? Right. No, 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 the original no, no. one. Uh, people okay, at home are yelling at our show right now. Just, They're screaming into their phones. I know. Phone that's saying, what I'm I have to. Like, James Earl Jones. Jones. Yeah, James Earl Jones. Yeah, he just passed away. Yeah, we yeah, just said that. Been, okay. Yeah. Anyway, all right, we're all moving right, on sorry. now. Yeah, sorry for doing that, but. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> this is how our life is. Okay, so let's get to the polls here a little bit. Yeah. Now, I don't want to get into individual polls because there's too many of them now. Okay. All right, but so the best thing to do when that happens is go to the Real Clear Politics average of polls. Okay. Okay. And I want to start with you on the battleground states because those that's the only thing that really matters. We'll talk about both, but but this is the only thing that really matters. So the RCP averages for all the battleground states, and as many of you know, we basically have seven battleground states. It's Arizona, it's Nevada, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan. It is Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia. Every single one on the RCP average has Trump ahead by a very, very slim margin. Hmm. A couple of points here and there, maybe a half point in some spots. For example, North Carolina is like less than a half a point. But if you get up to around the total number, by the way, if you're counting them all together, is 1.1 points. Oh, my gosh. That, that Trump is ahead by if you average them out and you go on down the list here. And some of the numbers that are most interesting, Nevada is interesting. Georgia is interesting. They're all interesting, right? So they're very, very close here. Now, the national numbers are a little bit different. If you look at the national averages, those actually favor Harris. But if you look at how much they favor Harris, and Ava, go to the blue line here. So we're taking all of the the big national polls. And if you take them all together and average them out, Harris has a 0.6 point lead. 0.6, less than a point. Okay, and we've talked about this before. If Harris does not have a three-point lead, she's not winning, okay? So right now, this is why you see Harris starting to really, and we saw it over the past couple of weeks, they've panicked, Mm -hmm. and and they're trying to adjust, and they're trying to find the right message. Campaigns do it all the time. When you know the numbers aren't in your favor, you've got to adjust, and then you've got to move a little bit and change. So Harris starts doing more interviews. You know, Harris does things like gets more aggressive and going after Trump and everything else. So as all of this happens, you see things starting to flip. In fact, if you take a trajectory of all the lines, Ava, and let's go to graphic number eight. If you go in tight on those lines, what happened was right after Harris was named and she went through the convention and the debate, what you see is the blue line go over the red line. Mm -hmm. 
And she had about a three week to a month long period right. where she was polling better than Trump. It she looked spreading the joy. It That's looked very, very good, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But then look what's happened since then. The joy has worn down. The joy gets worn down. You have to bring out substance. Right. That's a Turns tough, out. tough thing when to do. For president. And we're going to talk about how tough it is for her to try to make the point on some of her issues. We've talked about it a lot. But anyway, she's diving down. Trump isn't really skyrocketing up, but he's just sort of slowly maintaining or maybe rising just a bit. Right. So Trump is actually slightly more popular than he's been ever, quite frankly. Okay, Which is, is shocking. We talked about that last night. Well, yeah, and, and we will get into that, too, because this is a little bit of Trump is right now, for the first time, I think, in his political career, the cool kid. Yeah, He's the cool kid in class, and the other cool kids like him. And what I mean by that is the younger generation are really coming around him uh, quite a bit. Actually, you've got some younger podcasters who are mm-hmm. the Theo Vons of the world. And he's not necessarily particularly young, but but still. And then you've got also people like Elon Musk, where he is the foremost business, creative, scientific mind in the world. You could right. make that case. No question. The lar- I would and- say the biggest entrepreneur, probably the industrial um, entrepreneur of the last hundred years probably could i mean it, yeah and you throw science into that when you consider what he's done with tesla you mean when he's, he's done, when he's got the rocket back down when he's been able to like bring down. the yeah. rocket back I, down yeah no and, and yeah. so trump for the first time ever i think is is the guy who's like wow you start looking you go dana white likes trump and then you go elon musk likes trump a lot of the tech bros like trump a lot of the you know those cool hedge fund guys that, that like trump now here's a case i would make to you it's like a classroom and you're in high school, okay? And it used to be that the Republicans were always the guys who would show up with the button-down collar shirts and the crisp jeans. Like and Alex P. Keaton. Yeah, it, like, it's the Alex P. Keaton. Yeah. yeah, you'd see him, and you yeah. look at Alex P. Keaton, and you say, he's a sharp guy. Yeah. You know, he's got some decent ideas. He always ideas. has a tie on the show, I think. Always has a tie. Ties. Right, yeah. right. And, and smart, but not cool. Like, it was not cool. Like, <laughs> right. you weren't. it was never cool to be the Republican, Right. And, and, and the Democrat was always cool. It was mm-hmm. always like the guy who was like, yeah, sitting in the back of the room. You know what I mean? Like had the leather coat on, was yeah. cool. Was like, hey, he would say things that nobody else would say. You know, he, he would do things and be what like, hey. What high school you went to, by the way? But anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so then what's happened is we've seen a complete flip. Where now the coolest kids in the class are Republicans. The Elon Musk of the world are, is stepping in and he's cool. The Dana White comes in and he's cool. And the Democrats... Now, used to be in the leather coat, cool. Now they're like, no, 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 no. They're the ones who are like, no, you don't get to talk in class. Be quiet in class. Watch what you say. You can't do that. That's not nice. Stop being like that. And all of a sudden, we've seen the parties completely flip. And for the first time, Trump, his crew, they're cool. And now the Democrats, Kamala Harris is like, why are you guys such a bummer? And so I think it's amazing. Yeah, I just is. think it's amazing. Well, I think it's interesting. I think even like the the McDonald's kind of political stunt of this earlier in this week really just kind of shifted. And, you know, you could say it was a PR stunt. You could just say, oh, gosh, this was nothing. But it painted him kind of as a every man's man. Like, you know, he's not working at McDonald's by any stretch. He doesn't stretch. try to say he is, no, right? No, yeah. well, that wasn't the point of it. The point is, is that, you know, that he goes and eats a ton of McDonald's. For he stars. does. But it was kind of cool. And he just was really random. Like, he was just really himself, I think. Like you just kind of see him as like every authentic, guy. Authentic, kind of authentic, authentic sort of for him, yeah, right? I for mean, him. It's, yeah, and he is an authentic guy in the respect that he never tries to make you think. Oh, that, I think you know, we all know who he is. Yeah. It's not like it's not like it's a big mystery who Trump is. He yeah. showed us who he's and he's kind of been the same guy for you know decades and decades yeah, yeah, being on yeah. TV. So no, no, I think it's a really good point. Anyway, uh, the yeah. McDonald's point's a great one. And and so then if you take where where the states are leaning, and you say if where they're leaning is how things finish, this is what the electoral college would look like. 312 to 226, Trump in a roll, the blue wall goes red across the board. Georgia goes red, Arizona goes red, Nevada goes red. They all go red, and and it's a blowout. Okay, so we'll see. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. It's going to be a we'll spicy see. election night. It with is. It being it this is. Close. There's a I, lot that's still going to happen, I think, in the next 14 days. Like, okay, so did, did we get clarity? I may have asked you this before. Maybe I just already forgot because this is how I am right now. Do we think we're going to know what Georgia does that night since they're going to be hand counting well, the, the, the vote based see, after I don't the think they machine? hand count that night. So I think you're going to get a result. They're and just then, not going to 
Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, until... ex- I just don't have any idea. Okay. All right. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know what Georgia's out. doing, uh, but, but no, there are plenty of states though, to your point, And Arizona is one of them where they've said, we may not have results for 10 days, 10 days. So just to give you an idea of the best way that this should be done across the country is the way Florida does it, which is Florida's law says they count votes as they come in. If you send in an absentee ballot, they open it and they count it when they get it. Yes. And early votes, (laughs) they tallied them as they come in. Okay. The vote they count that night is the election day vote in Florida. I guarantee you. We'll have a result by about 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Florida will be done. You'll know it. You'll and know so every vote. What do they do vote. with all those results? They, they just keep them locked yeah. up in a well, safe yes. somewhere, well, so they nobody keep can locked manage- up in a safe. You just—that's what you have a Secretary of State for, and that's why you have some integrity and you make sure that you don't release things beforehand. But no, Florida does it the right way, and that's the way all states should do it. You should have to show an ID. And then they should count votes as they get them and then count election day on election day. And I also like the idea that you had where we put a code on the actual ballot so you can keep tracking your ballot to make sure nothing ever yeah. gets then you know with it. Then so you, you know, know when your vote was counted. Right, when it was counted. and Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. So anyway, th- that's one of those things that, that's going to happen. But your point is exactly right. You know, you mentioned, you know, Georgia, but there are other states that could take a while. Well, and okay, let's get to the media again. Yeah. It's not shocking that I, you know, we were seeing the trust in the media going down. It's kind of just collapsing. I think it's been going down kind of steadily. Um, you pulled this graph. Yeah. And this shows, uh, this shows the trust in media from 1972 to 2024. Okay. And it is cratered. It is cratered. It was at a high in the in the 70s. All political parties were right around 70%, including independents, and in whether they believed in what the media was saying. Okay? Really, really important, actually. It was good. Mm-hmm. But then since that time, and it has slowly been on the decline, now 12% of Republicans believe the mainstream media mm-hmm. and trust them, 27% of independents, and only 54% of Democrats. Wow. So you look at those numbers, and it's just staggering. You see that, that, so why are people losing such faith? Well, a couple things. I think digitally, we're able to now go on Twitter. We're able to go on Facebook. You're able to get other information other ways. Right. So they don't have a monopoly on the information. Right. And then shows like ours, you know, and other bigger shows that do similar stuff that we do. Right. Give you real information and maybe longer format. So you can kind of see both sides of an issue or you hear more about one thing so you can make your own opinion. They're not just like quick, fast story reads. So I do think that's actually changed things too. Yeah, oh, it definitely leads to people being more informed in some ways. Right, they want to come over to longer formats. So they get more of the story. And I think that does shift your thinking when you're comparing it against a media that tells you in 30 seconds something, I guess. Yeah, or, or they completely, or they tell you in a longer form, but it's just completely and totally slanted. Oh, like this one. Let's show this clip that we saw this week. This came out on CBS okay. um, on Monday night. If you don't think there's bias in this... I, I don't even know what to tell you. Just take a look. Uh, selection day is just over two weeks away, and the fight for every single last undecided vote in battleground states is intensifying. Vice President Kamala Harris is targeting disaffected Republican voters by hitting the trail with Liz Cheney in the crucial blue wall states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Cheney was a powerful Republican congresswoman, and today she called Harris a responsible adult. As for former President Donald Trump, he was back in North Carolina again, pushing false claims about FEMA and immigrants. That's after he spent the weekend slinging a crude insult at Harris, engaging in lewd locker room talk about the late golfing legend Arnold Palmer and staging a campaign stunt at a Pennsylvania McDonald's. Unbelievable. I mean, there's That's like unreal. F- five sentences in mainstream media that are just, they're so slanted. It would, I mean, I don't even know how that gets by. Oh, well, uh, in this is not MSNBC, right? No, this CBS is CBS. CBS would have you believe, the Tiffany Network right. would have you believe that, that they are fair, that they tell both sides. That is the lead couple of paragraphs in the CBS Evening News. It is an embarrassment. Yeah. It is an embarrassment. I mean- you go and see that and watch it. You just go, what is happening here? And, and here's the thing. You have the mainstream media. You have a two-to-one spending advantage for Harris. And this is all happening despite that. And, and so this is why you're seeing, th- seeing things intensify so much. Because right now, you're watching all the powers that be go, why is this not moving? Mm. 
-hmm. Why is it in people genuinely, if you ask people in these swing states and across the country, are you better off than you were four years ago? There is a very, very significant and, and very simple answer. The answer is no. Right. And so all the, all the push in the world from the Nora O'Donnell's who's losing that job, by the way, is because she? of low ratings. Absolutely. So she's done. Okay. And these guys, they don't understand. And here's what kills me about watching something like that from the CBS evening news. They are ending their own jobs. They are going to be out of business. If they keep pushing narratives for one candidate over another, just lay it out there and let people make the decision. They will flock to you to get the information. Still, you still have a chance to matter. But if you try to say, you're going to think the way we want you to think, then you're going to lose. And that's exactly what's happening. Well, even like the CBS 60 Minutes show not releasing the transcript of the full interview with Harris. I don't understand that. Like as somebody like they they've released plenty of transcripts. So I don't understand that when asked about that, then they just respond. Well, Trump is allowed to come on our show. We've invited him. He's welcome anytime. That's not an answer to the question. So, again, that speaks to them more than anything, more yeah. than Harris or Trump. It's like. Don't you want to outlist, outlive both of them and their presidencies? Yeah. Like you, you, you guys have been around a long time. So I would get your ducks in a row if you want people to still be listening to you or buying advertising on you, which let's be honest, that's what news media, that's what a large part of what they care about. Yeah, so. absolutely. But they're getting desperate. They're calling them. They're, it's back. Well, it is. So yeah. So the uh, Trump is Hitler. This is the approach now right. that the Harris campaign is taking now. in the last two weeks. <laughs> well, no, true. But it, they were trying other things. They, they were trying mm -hmm. other things. They were trying the joy thing. They were trying a bunch of other no, things. No, but Mark, they, they were doing this and then they, they stopped when we got an assassination attempt. They calmed it down for a five seconds and well, now they're back. With right, it. right. So then you've got all these articles that are coming out, which here's one example. Leading civil rights lawyer says 20 ways Trump is copying Hitler's early rhetoric. I mean, he's, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. And then the Atlantic comes out and they do a two prong story and it says, Trump, I need the kind of generals that Hitler had. Here we go again, yeah. right? This it's the same stuff. And, and they, all these headlines that they continue to push. And let's not forget that the Atlantic is backed and it is, it is, done by a donor, a major donor of Harris runs the Atlantic. Right. Uh, owns, the, owns Atlantic. the Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the guy who wrote kind the article, nice. the guy who wrote the article in the Atlantic, this latest one, which we're going to detail one part of, he's the guy who came up with the suckers and losers story that he's never had any backup for any sourcing. He never had mm. any sourcing on it. And what the story you're about to hear here has no sourcing. Okay. So, so this story is about something that Trump did. Okay. Where he offered to pay for the funeral of a service member who died. Okay. And we want to read you this uh, and, and then give you the information, but it says in an Oval Office meeting on December 4th, and again, this is from the Atlantic, uh, December 4th, 2020 officials gathered to discuss a separate national security issue. Toward the end of the discussion, Trump asked for an update on the McCarthy investigation. Christopher Miller, the acting secretary of defense, Trump had fired his predecessor, Mark Esper, three weeks earlier, writing in a tweet, Mark Esper has been terminated. I don't know the significance of putting that in there, but anyway, was in attendance along with Miller's chief of staff, Cash Patel. At a certain point, according to two people present at the meeting, Trump asked, did they bill us for the funeral and what did it cost? Now, as far as the funeral goes, that's for Vanessa Guillen. And she, she had died at Fort Hood and they wanted to, and President Trump had promised to pay for her funeral if the government didn't take care of it, mm -hmm. if they didn't do what they needed to do. Well, according to attendees, and to contemporaneous notes of the meeting taken by a particular aide, he said, yes, we've received a bill. The funeral cost $60,000. Trump became angry. It doesn't cost $60,000 to bury a Mexican, he says, with some colorful language. He turned to his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and issued the order, don't pay it. Later that day, he was still agitated. Can you believe it? He said, people trying to rip me off. Right. Uh, the only, okay. Okay. Keep going. Okay. The only problem with this is it never happened. Right. According to the family, they were taken care of very well. In fact, this is Vanessa's sister who said this. She said, wow, this was on Twitter. Wow, I don't appreciate how you're exploiting my sister's death for politics, hurtful and disrespectful to the important changes she made for service members. President Donald Trump did nothing but show respect to my family and Vanessa. In fact, I voted for President Trump today. It gets even worse because they say in this article that Mark Meadows was in the room and he's 
the witness of this whole affair, right? Well, he tweets out, I was in the discussions featured in the Atlantic's latest hit piece against President Trump. Let me say this. Any suggestion that President Trump disparage Miss Gillen or refuse to pay for her funeral expenses is absolutely false. He was nothing but kind, gracious, and wanted to make sure that the military and the U.S. government did right by Vanessa Gillen and her family. Yeah. So, again, no sourcing. Just put it out there. Just like suckers and losers, right? N- there's there's no sourcing at all, and they just keep. If we keep saying it, though, people will believe it. Like, right, that so, is the message. I think is like, right. Let's just keep funneling it. And, and this was just a quick little clip of that conversation that Trump did have with the family, and, and there, there's there's video of it and audio, and you can hear Trump listening to what they said and wanting to help him out. There's a baby that was murdered. They threw him. They just wanted to say, an innocent life of child. Was thrown from the back room, all the way from the top of the building to the floor. And no death. It happened on a military base, and an innocent child died. Why? Why is that happening? They have to be investigated. So was this a forehead also? When would you like to have the funeral? When? As soon as possible. As soon as possible, I agree. As soon as possible with the. We'll make sure we make sure that happens. Okay, yeah. Where will you have the funeral? Do you know? Houston. In Houston? Yeah. Right. And if I can help you out with the funeral, I'll help, I'll help you out. I'll help you out. Financially, I'll help you. I think the military can take care of it. Good. They'll do it. Military. That's good. If you need help, I'll help you out. Thank you, Okay. If they need something, I'll, we'll take care. We'll make sure... Uh, she is uh, very respected. Okay. So this is just, I, I mean, here we go again, right? And this is the kind of thing where they think they're doing something that's going to help their candidate. And, and then you see this and go, give me a break. Mm-hmm. And and so, so much of this is crazy. Well, this is where we get back to the mainstream media, where you, as much of the media that you get mad about what they cover. It's it's what they don't cover oftentimes too. There, there are plenty of controversies right now, say a plagiarism controversy with Harris that, that they won't touch. Mm-hmm. They won't talk about it at all. And you've heard the story about what happened with Officer Guillen, right? And and what happened to Vanessa. And, and the fact that her family says, nope, that's not true. Meadows says, nope, didn't happen. And yet the CBS Evening News, they went for it again. They decided they were going to go for this issue and they were going to talk about it. Two weeks from Election Day as the final battleground sprint is underway. Every hour matters for these candidates as they try to reach as many voters as possible in the key states that will decide this election. For Donald Trump, that meant speaking at a roundtable in Florida at his golf club, courting the Latino vote. After that campaign stop, a new report that Trump, while president, used the F word to describe a murdered Mexican-American soldier. That story is that Trump scoffed at the price of a funeral he offered to pay for private Vanessa Guillen, something Trump's team tonight denied. Trump seemed to denies it. I mean, again, just any chance to throw something yeah. out there without looking into it, without mm-hmm. sourcing any of it. No. So this is that's the kind of stuff. It, it's well, infuriating. And now uh, Harris is back in, and now she's referring to Trump. Well, so she gave a a, a statement today. This was mm-hmm. amazing. She walks out on Wednesday and gives a three minute statement. Will not take a question, but she just reads a statement. And this tells you where the campaign's going in the last two weeks. Okay, this is the candidate. So that means the candidate is laying out exactly where they're going. Is she laying out her vision to improve the economy, to secure the border, to provide health care for people across this country? No, she's taking a very different approach. And this tells you something about the campaign. But here's a little clip from what she said. So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four star general, confirmed that wild Donald Trump was president. He said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Donald Trump said that because he does not want a military that is loyal to the United States Constitution. He wants a military that is loyal to him. He wants a military who will be loyal to him personally, one that will obey his orders even when he tells them to break the law or abandon their oath to the Constitution of the United States. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within. 
and even said that he would use the United States military to go after American citizens. And okay. let's be clear. Yeah, again, we've already about talked about this on an earlier is. show that is taken completely out of context from what he actually said and what he was talking about, which was trying to keep the peace if things go violent with riots after the election, which was in a response to answering a question that Biden had said that things should not are not going to be peaceful if uh, during the election process. Yeah. So that's what he was responding to. But anyway, she's getting it's it's just getting also the Hitler news and the, the all this talk about the general. That's not new. That's been out there. So I just think now they're putting it, they're recirculating the story. Well, John Kelly is, is for a long time, years, not like Trump, has, has come out and said a million things about him. And, and so, yeah, that's that's where you are. But this what this tells you is that's the last two weeks. This is the ultimate scorched earth. Right. What they figured out is they can't sell America on a plan because you don't have a candidate that's able to do that for a variety of reasons. So I want to play a clip for you on her interview with Telemundo. And she's asked a question. Now, here's the thing about interviews late in the campaign. When you do the super friendly interview late in the campaign, a lot of times your super friendlies are not so friendly anymore because they ask you a question and because you're trying to get the middle of the electorate, you're not pushing out to the edges. This isn't a primary, right? So you're trying to get the people in the middle who you need to convince to support you. And usually that means less of the far edge of your party, whatever party you're in. You're just, you're not doing that. You're in the middle of the electorate. You got to win this thing. And so when you go with the people that you think are super friendly, which she's done all the time, right? She's getting into a tough spot here because the friendly interview, he comes at her on immigration from the left, not from the right. So she's been getting hammered for open borders. Well, this guy, he's mad at her because he's, he doesn't think she's treating immigrants well enough. Right. So just listen to what he says and listen to her answer. This is a brutal takedown that didn't look like it would be a brutal takedown. Now we're talking about border security and there's nobody, no Democrat talking about a pathway to citizenship, uh, an immigration relief am, and the, the benefits that migrants bring to this country. Oh, but there is no question that Migrants bring, but America is a country that is, it was built in part by immigrants. But people are concerned who about their come. TPS, their DACA, their, um, we're talking about uh, mass deportations. I'm not talking about What do you stand on mass deportations? You, what's, what's your stand there? This, uh, we need smart, humane immigration policy so got, in America that okay. includes a pathway okay. to citizenship. So, so this was a tough, like she's going now, what do you say? Now, if you're Trump, you sit there and say, you don't get to flood into the country and break our laws. Right. So it, that is not kind to do that. Even to immigrants. We have immigrants that are waiting to get into this country. Immigrants are the lifeblood of the country. I come from an immigrant family. It's important. There's no doubt, but you got to follow the law. Mm -hmm. And if we follow the law, it's going to mean safety for our, our immigrants that come to this country. And it's going to mean a better country because of it. But what we have going on right now doesn't work brother. Mm -hmm. And you don't just get to come flooding in and then say, where's our pathway to citizenship. Right. Right. And, and so that's what she could have said, but she can't, no. she can't do it. She does not know her own policy. Well, no, points. she, no, no, no. That's not it though. Because she's making another point. That's not her policy point. Her policy point is the open border. But she knows that right now she can't say that because mm. she's trying to get the middle. So she's so she can see she's the cornered. terror in her eyes. She's cornered. She's cornered. Well, the good news is, is she's got her uh, her sidekick, Tim Waltz. He's out there. He's ch he's changing things up. He's just busy insulting Elon Musk. I mean, he's just going to go for it in a way that speaks really, uh, it's really above board, the way he just insulted Elon Musk. Take a look at this. Look, Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dip on these things. You know it. Okay. Which is, uh, that's what you want from a leader, is just like, let's just insult, let's just go out and insult people. That doesn't matter, by the way. Why is he insulting Elon Musk is beyond me. Okay, but. But then, if you're going to talk around, a, he's dancing around on a stage. I mean, I'm sorry. Have you not been watching Tim Waltz this whole time? What do you mean? 
I mean, between his jazz hands. Oh, yes. Look, there he here's is. Here's a little clip of for everybody. <laughs> okay, there's, we got jazz hand. I don't know what that is. It's like a jazz hand. A little flippy flop. Flippy yeah. flop. And then the seal clap is coming up. I'm, I think there's going to be a, seal, a couple of seal claps. It is wild that like, he look, uses he that. Like, there he goes. I mean, there there's we go. a seal, seal clap. clap. Seal clap. Oh, and big waves. And like you, like that's not dancing around on the stage. That's not acting like a, I mean, it's just weird. Like, it, don't it's, insult it's, that guy. It is, it is the classic. You say about somebody else what you are yourself. I mean, it happens all the time. And this is exactly what he's it's it's just a wild thing. And it's like Tim Waltz going after Elon Musk is craziness. It just doesn't make just any sense. Just don't do it. Just it don't pick that sense. fight. Don't pick that fight. Pick the other fight against your opponents and everything right. else. But but do not pick that fight because it just doesn't make any sense. No. So yeah, agreed. It was it was wild. So one other thing, uh Friday, Trump will be on Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. So that will be. You think he'll interesting. be on the whole three hours? I don't imagine he would That's be. A I, long I would think he'd do an hour. I, yeah. I think he'll do an hour. Would be my guess. And obviously, because he's got to save the other hour for Harris, right? I mean, she's going on, right? And she is not. She's turned down the opportunity. <laughs> but Trump has met Elon Musk before, uh, or excuse me, has met Joe Rogan before. Excuse me. But you know, so they've definitely met. They know each other a bit. But he's never been on Rogan's show. Interesting. So this will be interesting. Again, another one of this. He's going on the Cool Kids show. Yeah. Right. He's going on the Cool Kids show. And so that's going to bolster him most likely with more male voters trying to extend that. Right. That's kind of how advantage. he's spending his time. Yeah. Is and, trying and I to think focus it's on the male vote and trying to get more of, of those folks to cross. Over. Yeah. Yeah. And if, because the other part of his campaign would be, hey, go after the female vote with the safety and border issue mm -hmm. and then and then go after the male vote on some of these on some of these other platforms. Okay, let's talk about uh, two Me New Mexico hotels. They're ranked now among America's most haunted. Any guesses out there what they are? Anybody want to take a stab at home before we tell you what it is? Say it out loud right now. Uh, okay. There and you then, go. <laughs> well, it, it was funny because I thought we could. it would be something. I thought it was going to be something less well-known, but the, the two oh, that yeah, were. they're really well-known. They're very well-known. So we got the La Posada. Yep. That is one that's been released in this 2024 list of the most haunted hotels in America. It's, the, I believe it's room 101 is that is Julie Sweet. Yeah, Julia Julia, Julia Sweet. Sweet. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. In the Rose Room on the ground floor. Yep. And and they definitely embrace that haunted reputation. We've we've been in there, we've sat in their bar, we've listened to their uh tales about it. Right. And uh, it is part of that. And then the La Fonda. Yes. Which is where me and Mark got married. We got married on their roof. We did. La Terraza deck there yeah, at La Fonda. Of the La Fonda. Wow. There were no ghosts that we were aware of no. at our ceremony. There was a no. lot of wind. So maybe, maybe they blew No, wind it's and true. Blew out, that a pot blew over, though, during yes. our wedding and broke. It did break. I see. We didn't, we didn't attribute that. A sign? It kind of has been a sign. Like maybe it's like our <laughs> whatever that's there anyway. Well, um, so for in, in the sense of Halloween, if you're looking for some haunted haunts in New Mexico, you can go check those two hotels out. Yep. But All right. Well, I would say we'll be back soon because we're going to have a lot more news. I already yes. know. And we've got a big week. interview coming up for you on Sunday, Monday show. Uh, you're going to talk to Gabriel Ramos, who is running for Senate District 28 down in southwestern New Mexico. Used to be a Democrat. Now is a Republican. Is one of these guys who's just sort of makes a lot of sense. And he talks about what it was like. He was actually appointed by MLG wow, to serve in the Senate seat. And then they ran someone against him because he, oh he's got a pretty traditional New Mexico value. So it's, it's yeah. really interesting. So we'll, we'll talk to him and then we'll have a full update for you on the last week of the campaign. That's right. Thanks so much and have a great rest of the week. You've been listening to the No Doubt About It podcast. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at No Doubt About It Podcast. No Doubt About It. The No Doubt About It Podcast is a Choose Adventure Media production. See you next time on No Doubt About It. There is no doubt about it.